Okay. I, now I uh, the, uh, Enrique, your voice is breaking quite a oh, bit now. Oh, thank you for the kitchen. Ah. Okay. Um, Hen Hendrik, your voice is breaking uh, quite a bit. Can is it better? I think it was better before. Uh, but do anything. Uh, I I didn't do anything. So okay, fine. Just share your screen. I mean, okay. we will see if uh, we are able to see your screen. Yeah. Is it? You know, seeing. We are not able to see your screen yet. Yet. It, sh it shows it has started sharing, but I'm seeing a black screen as of now. Yeah, we can see your screen now, Henry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Your voice is breaking oh, no. quite a bit. Can you go back to your previous uh, internet connection that you had? Kerala, it was talk. Please bear with us. I think he's having some uh, internet connectivity issues and he has left the meeting probably joining again. Uh, he's not in. He, he's not in, yes. He has left the meeting now, I think. He's trying to reconnect possibly. As soon as we see him, we promote the co-host. Yeah. Are the other contributed talk speakers here? Perhaps we can, uh, I mean, we have probably done a test for Stefan, but we have not done a test for Tomislav and Rama, if they want to. Uh, I'm here, hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and we can see you fine. So that is good. Hello, uh, do you want Hi. to try to share screen? Um, Henrik is in. Now. Henrik is back. Okay, I think he's in. He's 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 back. Yes. Yeah, but um, I don't know if I will be able to do. Henrik, we are able to hear you perfectly fine now. We are hearing you much better. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we are uh, here. Um, it's, it's perfectly fine. But it seems I had problems printing before also, so it seems to be something with the with the network today here. At but the... we can hear you perfectly fine and we can see your slides, so I think we can start now. Thank you, thank you, great. Um, there I'll. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, uh, I would also have liked to be in Kerala. It would have been we would have not had these problems then. Um, so uh, what I'll first talk about is the history of the excited state aromaticity uh, topic. 
Um, the theory, qualitative theory in particular, uh, and also uh, experimental manifestations. Uh, then what I see as the scopes, uh, how it should be, could be used uh, in future, uh, particularly for understanding photochemistry and also designing molecules for different applications. Uh, but I also want to stress that the concepts have uh, limitations and that it's complications and also pitfalls particularly these two molecules which are polycyclic or have um, other functionalities, um, heterocycles and so on. Uh, and then in my uh, second part, I will uh, go in a little bit more uh, looking at signet fission, chromophore design, uh, and also um, looking on photoreactivities, particularly uh, uh, excited state proton transfer reactions. So um, the aromaticity concept, uh, it's been around now for more than 150 years. Um, it is a um, rather fuzzy concept, but there's very many molecules that are aromatic. Uh, about two thirds of all known uh, molecules are aromatic or contain uh, aromatic parts. And we can also see this importance by uh, looking at the, um, uh, the, the number of um, papers using the concept. So one sees that it's nearly as uh, often used as concepts such as ionicity and acidity. But it's essentially only used in the electronic ground state. Um, so one can, um, I think there's a, a kind of a big possibility to, to, to develop new um, research science when going to the excited states. So uh, my aim broadly is to put the concepts in, uh, in a broader use. Um, and I think it can be used everything from um, design of new um, photoreaction for synthetic chemistry to solar energy research, exemplifying here uh, by this, um, th this, this drawing. So everything from um, astrochemistry to um, environmental chemistry. But uh, when we want to take it uh, into applications, these, these concepts, we must also know a little bit better when it cannot be applied. Uh, what are the complications? There's of course um, kind of complications in assessing aromaticity in excited states. We must rely on computational methods and so on. So um, going into the history, um, the concept um, was um, kind of excited state uh, aromaticity was first used in the mid 60s uh, by Michael Jewer and Howard Zimmerman uh, when they were looking at so-called pericyclic reactions. They were looking at both uh, thermal and photochemical pericyclic reactions and concluded that those that kind of are found that occur or uh, allowed, uh, they proceed by um, via uh, aromatic transition states. Uh, and those pericyclic reactions that do not, with, that we do not observe, um, they <clears throat> proceed via uh, anti-aromatic transition states. Uh, and this can then be exemplified in these uh, kind of fundamental um, cycloaddition reactions, the diels solder reaction, we know that it's a, uh, a thermal uh, pericyclic reaction. Uh, it goes via an uh, allowed an aromatic transition state. Well, then uh, the two plus two reaction is not, not occurring in the uh, ground state uh, and it's a uh, forbidden reaction uh, in the ground state and goes via an anti-aromatic transition state. Uh, and now uh, there's a reversal when going to the uh, lowest excited state. So there the diels solder reaction is um, forbidden, it goes via an anti-aromatic transition state, while then, uh, according to this theory, the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition goes via an aromatic transition state and is allowed. So um, this uh, was kind of developed in, in the mid-60s, uh, and then uh, Colin Baird, who was a postdoc uh, in 68-69 uh, by uh, Michael Dewar, he developed this, uh, this further um, and used uh, perturbation molecular orbital theory to um, look at uh, triplet states uh, of different uh, annulines. Uh, and he could then conclude that uh, arguments based on simple perturbation theory indicate that the rules for ground state aromaticity are reversed in the 
uh, pi pi star triplet state, which then means that 4n rings are aromatic and 4n plus 2 rings are anti-aromatic. Uh, we can uh, understand this um, if you look uh, qualitatively uh, on uh, triplet state benzene uh, and triplet state cyclooctatetraene. Uh, and if we construct these two anulenes, uh, triplet state anulenes, from two uh, polyenyl monoradicals. So uh, for benzene, uh, we then create a triplet state benzene from uh, two allyl radicals. Uh, and we first look at the uh, type one orbital interaction, which is interaction between uh, singly, uh, the singly occupied MOs. Um, and there, this leads, um, this um, is kind of a destabilized destabilizing interaction because the um, antibonding combination between these two is more destabilizing than the bonding is stabilizing according to PMO theory. Uh, but uh, for um, the triplet state cyclotetraene, when we construct it from an allyl and a pentadienyl fragment, uh, we see that there's uh, no interaction because they have the uh, opposite symmetries, these orbitals. Uh, and yeah, it becomes zero, the, the interaction. Uh, but there are also other uh, orbital interactions between this SOMO uh, and the doubly um, uh, occupied and the empty orbitals on the opposite um, uh, radical fragment. Um, but for, for benzene, um, this type of type two interaction uh, is nil uh, because we have the opposite symmetries between the doubly occupied and the empty here. Um, while uh, for triplet state uh, COT, we have an interaction here um, because they have um, the same symmetry like this. Uh, and this then means that when summing up the type one and the type two interactions, uh, we get an um, energy loss um, in the case of uh, um, uh, benzene, triplet state benzene formation for, for, for an, from two allyl, while for uh, cyclooctatetratine, uh, we get an, uh, aromat uh, an energy gain uh, upon the cyclization to the triplet state. Uh, and this can um, yeah, summarize, as I said, uh, that the Baird's rule is opposite to Huckel's rule uh, for the singlet uh, ground state. Um, Colin Baird actually, uh, he didn't stay on uh, in this field. Um, he went on to uh, atmospheric chemistry, then to environmental chemistry and became uh, one of the uh, textbook author uh, of uh, one book here in environmental chemistry that has sold the most uh, worldwide. But he's uh, still around um, and um, yeah, two years ago, uh, we organized um, the first uh, conference on excited state aromaticity in uh, Sigtuna here in Sweden. Uh, and Mahesh is, I think, here. There. Um, so uh, hopefully it will be a new conference. Yes, and this is it. So um, uh, one can also look on uh, other um, um, topologies, orbital topologies, uh, Merbius topology. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, Yonichi Aihara did uh, a little bit uh, after uh, Colin Baird. Uh, and he could then see that uh, when going from the ground state, um, using the Huckel resonance energies, going to the excited state, in all cases, we see a um, reversal in the sign, which indicates uh, then that we have reversal in the aromatic and anti-aromatic characters upon uh, excitation. And it can be summarized very kind of um, simply as, as, as this cube here. Uh, we change from an aromatic to an anti-aromatic character when we either change the topology, when we change the number of electrons, or when we change the uh, electronic state or from a pi um, closed trial pi to a pi pi star uh, state. So um, understanding um, the qualitatively, um, this uh, we can um, look uh, also using valence bond theory. Uh, and this is what uh, Schmulz Silberg and Jehud Haas did. Um, and then um, understanding the triplet state, <clears throat> uh, triplet state 
um, um, cyclobutadiene here, uh, as it has uh, 2n plus 2 pi electron, pi alpha electrons, and then 2n minus 1 pi beta electrons. Uh, and this can only be used to 2n minus 1 pi bonds, which means that we describe it with these uh, resonance structures. And it means that we actually have uh, a 4n minus 2 pi electron cycle and two non-bonding same spin pi electrons. And a 4n minus 2 pi electron cycle is also Huckel aromatic. So they concluded that triplet state benzene, triplet state uh, cyclobutadiene based on valence bond theory should be uh, aromatic yeah, or have an aromatic character. And one can then also uh, yeah, simplify it uh, like this. Um, Cycloctatetrain tetrain dication to non bonded same spin pi electrons gives us a triplet uh, COT. Uh, triplet state benzene, uh, we're um, generating from a uh, benzene dication, which is Huckel anti aromatic, and we're adding to non bonding same spin pi electrons, uh, and we get the uh, anti aromatic triplet state uh, benzene. Um, so uh, then, no, I'm uh, going down. Uh, we also can use um, an, an approach uh, developed by uh, Marcos Mandado. Uh, if one looks on uh, Huckel's rule uh, as in, in separate spins, um, then one has the uh, Huckel's uh, 2n plus 1 uh, um, rule. Uh, and if n uh, is the same uh, as m, then we get the regular uh, Huckel aromaticity. But if uh, n uh, equals m plus one, uh, then we get to Baird aromaticity, um, which means then that Baird's foreign rule uh, is just simply twice Huckel's rule when we have uh, n equals m plus one. And the benzene uh, and the aromaticity in the triplet state can be understood from the fact that we have four pi alpha electrons and two by pi beta electrons, meaning that uh, it's both a pi alpha and pi beta anti-aromatic. While um, cyclooctatetrain in the T1 state, here we have five pi alpha and three pi beta, which um, means that both the pi alpha and the pi beta components are uh, aromatic, according to Huckel's rule for separate spins. So, uh, computationally, uh, going over from uh, qualitative theory to computations now, um, there's um, a number of different uh, tools for assessing uh, aromaticity. Um, and normally one should use uh, as many of these uh, as possible of different uh, aspects. We have the geometry aspect where uh, aromatic molecules should have um, bond uh, equal, uh, a, a great bond equalization and the planarity. Uh, and this is often measured uh, by the so-called HOMA index, um, uh, harmonic oscillate model of aromaticity, where values uh, between um, one half, uh, half and uh, one, one corresponds to aromatic, um, HOMA uh, around zero non-aromatic and negative HOMAs are anti-aromatic. There's also uh, magnetic properties. Uh, and here I can look on the induced uh, current, uh, ring currents, uh, if they are um, paratropic or diatropic. Uh, one can also use uh, the nucleus independent chemical shift method uh, developed by Schleier and now um, further um, developed by uh, Amnon Stanger at Technion and uh, Renana Poran also. Uh, and here an, a negative Nix value corresponds to an aromatic situation, a Nix value around zero, non-aromatic, and a positive Nix value, an anti-aromatic cycle. Uh, we also have uh, the energetic aspects of uh, aromaticity. Uh, and here one compares an potentially aromatic cycle with a uh, non-aromatic uh, isomer. Uh, and one then uh, kind of gets the isomerization stabilization energy. One can also look on the electron density uh, and see um, kind of how well distributed are the electrons uh, within, within a certain cycle. 
Um, so um, the first to kind of restart or uh, open the field uh, again was Paul Schleyer uh, in the late um, 90s. He was applying then the, um, the mix method and um, looked at a simple anulines, four an anulines. Uh, and if we here look on the uh, cyclobutadiene and cyclopentadienyl cation, uh, we can see that uh, in the singlet state, um, we have uh, for this reaction, we have positive aromatic stabilization energies, which actually indicates a destabilization when we go to these four and the cyclic species. Um, but he, and he also observed positive Nix values indicating anti aromaticity. Uh, but then going to the to the triplet state, we had a reversal both in the energetic and the magnetic uh, aromaticity indicators. So um, both uh, cyclobutadiene and cyclopentadienyl cation in the triplet state are uh, aromatic. Uh, and <clears throat> there's also been uh, earlier, um, kind of in, in the 70s, it was uh, EPR studies uh, on cyclopentadienyl cation. Uh, which was kind of uh, indicated that it has an uh, pentagonal structure uh, indicating aromaticity and also that it has a triplet ground state. Uh, this would uh, support that uh, the CP plus uh, is an aromatic uh, ion. Okay, so uh, the um, can say the first uh, explicit uh, application of excited state aromaticity outside. Uh, the field of um, pericyclic reactions was um, uh, posted by uh, Peter Wan uh, in the mid 80s. Uh, he was looking at uh, photosolvolysis reactions uh, when, um, and he could conclude then that um, fluorinol uh, is <clears throat> easily uh, photosolvolized. Uh, in the uh, excited state. And it concluded that it's because formation of a four pi cationic uh, uh, system uh, aromatic in the excited state. Uh, there's been um, kind of uh, also studies uh, now in the singlet excited states. Uh, and the most um, kind of fundamental is uh, one by Peter Karadakov. Uh, where he looked on uh, the three simplest uh, anulines, cyclobutadiene, cyclobenzene, uh, and cyclotetraene in the ground state, and the lowest pi pi star excited states. Uh, and here you can see uh, benzene having a negative value in the ground state, of course, aromatic, uh, and then um, in the T1 and S1 state, uh, anti-aromatic, uh, positive Nix values. While uh, we have the opposite, uh, trend uh, for CBD and uh, cyclopentatrate, strongly uh, anti-aromatic uh, according to Nix in the ground state and uh, aromatic uh, in the T1 and S1 states. And nearly cyclopentatrate is nearly as aromatic as uh, benzene uh, is in, in the ground state. There. So um, yeah, this is just exemplifying um, the paratropic and diatropic ring currents. So um, here, uh, diatropic ring current indicating aromaticity uh, is clockwise uh, in the way that we have applied the magnetic field out of the, um, uh, of, of the, the plane, uh, while the paratropicity is counterclockwise. Uh, and this is then for the, you see the reversal when going from the ground state to the T1 state. So the uh, spectroscopic evidence for triplet state aromat or excited state aromaticity uh, was also um, pushed forward by, um, by Peter Wan. Uh, he looked on um, dibenzo uh, oxapins uh, and saw then very large uh, Stokes trip uh, in this and, and analogous molecules. Uh, and he uh, attributed this, uh, the driving force for this geometry change uh, to the attainment of an eight pi electron uh, system like this, uh, which, which gave uh, the molecule a planar structure in contrast to the ground state where it's strongly puckered. Uh, we could also um, more recently uh, calculate the uh, aromaticity uh, of um, dibenzoxapins and acepins and similar compound uh, and could confirm here um, his, uh, his postulation 
Um, so this is for the triplet state, but one can also see the same uh, for, for the singlet excited state, um, which large negative Nix values for the particular the, the central rings uh, in these compounds. Uh, another uh, kind of um, a, a possibility is to show uh, how um, substituent patterns can be used to tune uh, the excited state properties uh, and energies. Uh, full veins, uh, which are molecules like this, um, they have, <clears throat> if we, in the ground state, uh, they can be uh, influenced by Hückel aromaticity, and particularly if we have electron donating groups, while uh, in the excited state, they can instead be uh, influenced by Baird aromaticity, uh, CP plus ring, uh, and that is favored uh, if we have electron withdrawing uh, substituent at the exocyclic position. And we can uh, just simply look at these, the colors of these compounds, um, these three different uh, tetrachloro uh, pentafulvenes, and, and kind of realize that they have very different uh, uh, photophysical properties, with the dicyanofulvene having the lowest uh, excitation energy in agreement with this uh, qualitative scheme here. So, um, what we did. Um, some years ago was to um, use um, or summarize the, the theory that had been published up until then, 2014-15, uh, uh, and then use this to uh, reinterpret earlier experimental observations. Uh, and I would, uh, if you're interested in excited state aromaticity, I would uh, propose to read uh, either of these uh, reviews. Uh, there's also been further uh, experimental spectroscopic uh, studies. The um, uh, group of uh, Professor Dong Ho Kim uh, and uh, Atsuhiro Osoka looked on the uh, excited state uh, absorption spectra, triplet state absorption spectra of these two um, expanded porphyrins, one uh, aromatic and the other anti-aromatic. Uh, and they could see that the spectral features uh, uh, swapped uh, when uh, going to the uh, to the triplet state, uh, and then by linking this to aromaticity indicators, they could uh, conclude that there was also an, a switch in the aromatic anti-aromatic character upon this uh, excitation. One can also assess the um, <clears throat> the energetic uh, stabilization, um, and this is uh, work that uh, I've been involved in. Um, well, looking on this um, cyclic uh, tetrathiophene, uh, which is uh, chiral and can be separated in its two uh, enantiomeric forms. Um, and then one can uh, record the uh, racemization rate and uh, the racemization enthalpy uh, in the ground state and in the excited states. Uh, and since the central uh, COT ring should be become aromatic in the excited state, we postulated that there should be a reduced barrier in the excited states compared to the ground state. And um, this is uh, indeed what, what one observes. Looking at the uh, CD uh, spectroscopy, uh, time-dependent CD spectral, uh, one can see that there's a faster racemization um, when irradiated. Uh, and particularly under uh, sensitized conditions, uh, which of course then is connected uh, with the lifetime uh, of this species. Uh, and um, <clears throat> from this, um, the uh, I-ring plot, we could kind of determine <clears throat> the racemization enthalpies. Uh, and there was a significant lowering uh, in the uh, excited state, both in the T1 uh, and in the S1 state. Uh, and with this, we could uh, assess the uh, aromatic stabilization energy to be around 21 to 22 kcal per mole. Uh, and one can also kind of um, look into this uh, computationally, this uh, being the um, ring current, uh, uh, which actually at the minimum, we have a uh, diatropic ring current, uh, but it's uh, enhanced um, when we're going to the uh, to the transition state, but this actually. Hendrik, you have around five minutes for your tutorial talk. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, one can conclude that uh, excited state aromaticity is actually growing uh, in, in, in activity. Um, and <clears throat> I think it's important to stress the, the scopes. I will be talking more about this uh, in the second part, uh, but then uh, a little bit about the limitations uh, or uh, yeah, how it can be used. Clause rule for the ground state uh, tells that um, we in uh, polybenzenoid hydrocarbons, uh, we have the most stable uh, isomer uh, is the one where we can form the uh, maximum number of uh, benzene sextets. Uh, and one can um, do the same um, kind of conclusion uh, combining Claude's rule and, and Baird's rule. Uh, one can see that uh, this can be used uh, to conclude that this one uh, is the most stable in the triplet state, where we have a central bad octet on the pentaline unit. Um, and this can, uh, I will show it uh, in the second part, can be used to design singlet fission chromophores. Um, but a uh, little bit about the complications, limitations and the pitfalls. Uh, complications is what computation and method should one use. Limitations, uh, when does uh, the bad aromaticity vanish? Uh, it's kind of one gets two large molecules and uh, pitfalls. As we see, there can also be um, Huckel aromaticity in, uh, in excited states. So a negative Nix value is not always corresponding to bad aromaticity. Uh, and um, yeah, we've um, explored this uh, on uh, microcycles because they are computationally Quite, uh, quite complex or uh, intricate. Uh, one can have several different conformers of these. Um, one can have um, conformers where one has bad aromaticity along the complete cycle. And one can also have a conformers where one has kind of a local aromaticity on a few, uh, a few of the monocycles. And we looked on different monocycles, benzene rings, furan rings, uh, and so on. So uh, of course, um, <clears throat> yeah, I can varies with uh, computational methods, uh, and it also varies. Um, it's it's particularly difficult for the singlet excited states because we have a limited number of aromaticity indices. Uh, it's primarily just um, um, Nix calculated with the cos CF, um, and here you can see uh, a little bit of a variation how. Uh, the different uh, functionals, uh, B3LIP, cum B3LIP, and MO6-2X uh, performs uh, on these uh, different macrocycles. And in all cases here, uh, we found that the B3LIP, uh, when uh, B3LIP geometry, when assessed by um, a couple of cluster calculations at, uh, at this level, uh, Frank Nies's uh, approximative couple cluster, uh, we find that the B3LIP gives the, the best geometries, uh, which is actually in contrast to what it was, what it is uh, in the in the ground state. Um, then, uh, yeah, one can also see that one has different uh, aromaticity, uh, different aromaticity indices gives uh, different answers. Uh, we can see for this uh, 8CFU that um, with uh, MO6-2X, we have essentially non-aromaticity, but uh, with uh, Nix, but with HOMA, we get an aromaticity with that uh, method. Um, we have also different, uh, different conformers uh, in the excited state can be here with MO6-2X, we have two conformers. Um, and yeah, I'll um, actually skip this uh, or uh, the, one can also have uh, Huckel aromaticity in the excited states. Um, and uh, as, as revealed here, um, and I'll, I'll show this uh, better with, with this compound here, a TMTQ, um, which uh, is a quinoidal uh, compound that can have both, can influence both a bad aromaticity and uh, Huckel aromaticity. We can have a central 10 pi electron aromatic cycle and an eight pi electron bad aromatic uh, cycle. Uh, and this being a switter ion uh, is kind of, um, kind of a charge has then a charge transfer character. Uh, we could assess that 
uh, the bad aromatic uh, structure contributes about 10 to 15 percent. Um, and um, primarily hyckel aromaticity is what these compounds are. Uh, one can also do a similar analysis for the S1 state, which uh, recently was done by Miguel Sola and uh, David Casanova and myself. And one can, um, but yeah, um, one can actually what one can, what one must do in order to understand if the compound is hyckel or bad aromatic uh, is to make use of so-called spin separate uh, aromaticity indices. Uh, and um, I can I can go to this one here and one can from this the flu index here, the delta flu, we can uh, realize that the TMTQ in the triplet state is very far from um, from the, um, the, the, the the correct the 100% bad aromatic structure. So there I would like to and I think it's um, it has potential, but uh, but one needs to be a little bit careful when using these uh, these concepts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Henrik. Uh, we have already have a question in the chat box. Chat box, and um, uh, Alessio is asking: Could it be mix calculated outside of the green plane more reliable? since there will be the lockout of sigma electrons effects. In, uh, in the TMTQ, uh, this uh, here, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, well, um, let's see, where did, yeah, uh, we did here an uh, Nix scan. So it is actually scanned uh, out um, down from uh, and and uh, up until five Ohmstrom below the um, this um, this unit. Uh, now yeah, the I should look on the uh, the out of plane component, and we can see that it's strongly negative. So uh, in uh, in molecules that are <clears throat> I cannot uh, difficult. Well, uh, actually, always one one should uh, not calculate the nix uh, in the center, but one should calculate um, one or a little bit further uh, out from from the ring. Uh, and uh, yeah, either doing a nix uh, nix z scan uh, as here or a nix x y scan there. So yes, th that's. It's also what we what we have done here. Okay, are there any more questions for Hendrik? In the meantime, okay, Swati, you can unmute yourself and ask the question now. Please go ahead, Swati. We are not able to hear you. Do you want to type your question? Swati, you might be having a problem with your audio. Do you want to go ahead and type your question in the chat? Yes, please go ahead. So while uh, Swati is, okay, here, her question is here. Uh, suppose we are calculating Nix value of a benzene dimer, which functional will be more accurate? Um, a benzene dimer. Um, Yes, uh, I would, um, you need to have some, well, dispersion uh, there, but, but that's general. Um, uh, I would, well, generally we are, uh, I, I think this has to be assessed more um, kind of in detail. It's, it's a little bit unclear um, because it might not be that what we know from the from the ground state uh, that it applies in the uh, excited state here, uh, based on what we found from the uh, these couple of cluster calculations on the uh, on the uh, macrocycles. 
um, the general conclusion has been that Cambi trilip should be used for uh, for large pi conjugated systems or for uh, kind of uh, yeah, uh, aromatic systems in general. But but um, this sets. I, I I cannot give a give a definite answer. I think it's uh, it should be investigated further. With functional should be used there. If that, yeah, mm -hmm. sorry okay, this for this. This was actually a question. A que okay. Uh, this was actually a question from Keithy. Swati has now uh, typed her question. How can we figure out the pitfall of getting false negative Nix value? Okay. Uh, uh, false negative Nix values. Or, um, um, yeah, um, yes, uh, this is a pitfall that I didn't bring up uh, in some molecules, um, if one takes, for example, a constrained uh, biphenyl, uh, where one has uh, two uh, triplets or two um, anti-aromatic benzene rings, then um, in that void or that saturated cycle outside, um, those two, two paratropic uh, current would in their uh, outside give rise to a kind of a false uh, diatropic ring current and negative Nix values. Um, yeah, what one should, when running Nix, uh, one should always um, try to uh, plot the current density, either with acid uh, from Reinhard Herges or um, the Jimic, um, Jimic method from uh, Dag Sundholm or some other uh, current density uh, plotting uh, program. Because, yeah, the, um, the Nix values uh, can be a little bit shaky sometimes. Right. So there's a question from Fabio. Uh, do you want to ask it uh, yourself, Fabio? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, please go. Interesting, very interesting topic. And, uh, I would like to know whether you can uh, quantify this uh, excited state aromaticity experimentally, because obviously, in order to confirm the concept, it's necessary also to measure it. Yeah, um, this um, this is a little bit what um, uh, uh, Dong Ho Kim uh, has been um, working on. Um, we are uh, time resolved vibrational. Um, um, spectroscopy, or, um, or, but um, I, I don't know if it's uh, to quantify um, uh, is really, experimental is really difficult. I um, rather the quantify, let's say, confirm the concept. Com confirm. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, if we measure the, it's possible to probably measure the uh, ring current uh, in the benzene uh, experimentally, I think, or at least the effect of the ring current uh, in the ground state of benzene. So is it possible to do such a measurement for the excited state? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm um, half a theoretician, half or, uh, but I would not really, um, I would, uh, I would think that the best would be some uh, really ultra fast where you can see a change in the electron density kind of upon excitation that you would, um, for example, cyclooctatetraene, uh, when it's excited, if you would see that it um, becomes more um, electron delocalized, uh, but this would be uh, really ultra fast. Would, I suppose it would be up to second spectroscopy. <laughs> Um, okay. That is what I think is needed. So it's uh, unfortunately the, the the field so far is very heavily relying on uh, computationals, to computational. Okay. But but it would be great to develop uh, experimental means to assess excited state aromaticity. Thanks a lot. Very interesting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Thank you for your nice questions, Fabio. So are there any other questions for Henrik before we move over to his research talk? 
I don't see any. So Henrik, we, you can now stop sharing this one or if you have the research talk in the same screen, we yeah. can go ahead with it. No, uh, I need to uh, change uh, with here. Sure. Um, see their part or two and now it's not at the start. Yeah. Uh, oh, now uh, I might need to stop sharing again because it's Ah, there, uh, it's on the wrong screen. Um, okay. There, now. Uh, <coughs> so, do you see it? Yes, it is here now. Yeah. And, yeah, so, um, now I'm going um, over uh, a little bit more to towards applications using it. Um, first for singlet vision, chromophore design. Uh, and then for uh, understanding photoreactivity, especially uh, excited state proton transfer reactions. Uh, and as I showed uh, very quickly before, um, <clears throat> one can use the um, uh, the um, the concept to kind of tune, uh, exemplified on on uh, the full vein. We can change the uh, excitation energies. By uh, by substituents, <clears throat> uh, and this should be a, a useful way to uh, design new singlet vision chromophores. Uh, and also, uh, I showed very quickly that uh, we consider benzene to be a molecular Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, but in in the opposite sense, uh, because uh, well, while um, Mr. Hyde, the ugly personality, came out uh, under darkness. Um, and darkness, um, the ugly um, benzene, Mr. Hyde, comes out when we uh, irradiating benzene. Uh, so, um, continuing on, on this, um, on the single fission topic uh, first, uh, it begins uh, starting uh, on this uh, combination of uh, Clars and Baird's rules, uh, where we saw that we can, uh, <clears throat> sorry, these uh, isomers with um, which can have localized um, uh, bad aromatic units uh, often have uh, very low uh, excited states, uh, low lying excited states. Uh, and we can see it here. This is for the triplet state where we have a large localization of the spin density to the central pentaline unit. And we can also see that we have some diatropic ring current in the in the central pentaline, uh, and then in the four outer uh, benzene uh, hexagons. So um, this can be uh, used. Then we can see uh, that the connectivity around this four pi electron unit <clears throat> kind of um, influences the uh, the energy. Uh, so if we have the linear, we have high. Uh, triplet energies, um, but if we go to, to this, where we can have localized um, the, the doubly bent, we can have a localized structure, uh, triplet state uh, character to the central four pi electron unit. Uh, and um, then what do we need for uh, singlet fission? We need to have uh, chromophores, which are such that um, the um, uh, the singlet excited state must be uh, at least twice above uh, the triplet state uh, because um, the first triplet state, uh, because in, uh, in that case, we can use uh, one uh, singlet exciton to produce uh, two triplet excitons into uh, neighboring molecules or uh, into chromophores within uh, the same molecule. Uh, and um, yeah, th th there's uh, a lot of ongoing theory on uh, how this, how one goes from these uh, excited from the first step from the singly excited, singlet excitation to the uh, true triplet uh, excitons. But uh, we have these requirements that the uh, S1 state should be more than twice above the triplets, first triplet state in energy. Uh, and we should also have uh, the T2 state uh, ideally above the S1 state so that we don't have any um, 
kind of intersystem crossing uh, to the T2 state and then uh, further decay there. So uh, how can we uh, make use of Baird's rule to identify um, compounds that fulfill uh, these criteria? Uh, well, uh, if one looks on the two <clears throat> most prototypical uh, anulines, benzene and cyclobutadiene, uh, one can see that uh, benzene uh, being aromatic in the ground state, a stabilized uh, molecule, uh, and it's anti-aromatic uh, in its first triplet state, which means that it has a, it's, it's destabilized uh, relatively. Uh, and that means that we have for benzene a large uh, energy gap between the ground state and the T1 state. Uh, the opposite uh, is the case for cyclobutadiene. Here we have an anti-aromatic ground state and an aromatic uh, T1 and S1 state, which means that we have a small gap but cyclobutadiene is not the uh, ideal molecule uh, for a singlet fission chromophore. Uh, it's very reactive uh, and, and it has a too low uh, T1 energy. Ideally, triplet energies should be around one electron volt. So we should uh, be searching in a region uh, like this, the gray region. Uh, and um, then um, utilizing this concept that I <clears throat> looking at the different connectivity, the topologies of ben benzenylated foreign pi electron uh, anulines, we could uh, identify a series of, uh, of uh, pentalines uh, that could be interested for singlet fission uh, chromophores. Uh, the problem with these ones being, though, that they have <clears throat> very low uh, oscillator strength, so very low absorption. Um, but one can see um, also um, kind of, yeah, one, one, one can identify, one can see that when we change the connectivity in certain patterns, um, we have a rather constant uh, energy difference between the, um, the S1 and the T1 state, uh, because this would then be kind of, um, valuable when identifying uh, new chromophores. Um, and yes, it, it actually builds on this, uh, this model here. So um, that we have, uh, if we could find compound classes uh, where we have a rather constant energy difference between the S1 and the T1 state, uh, then where we have a constant uh, uh, the size of the exchange uh, interaction, uh, then we would um, be able to, just by tuning the aromaticity, we should be able to identify uh, singlet fission chromophores. Uh, and here um, we looked on uh, substituted full venes uh, for this purpose, because um, yeah, one, one can uh, kind of conclude that the excitation is fairly localized to the to the central um, five-membered ring and the exocyclic uh, double bond. Uh, and uh, we can, yeah, um, by then uh, enhancing the, um, the, the uh, triplet state aromaticity by either proper substitution at the endocyclic position or at the exocyclic uh, positions, we can, we can stabilize the triplet state uh, and according to computations, one should uh, even be able to get the triplet ground state, which uh, it's, it's, it's not so surprising because uh, this species in, in the triplet state will be a cyclopentadienyl cation. Uh, and as, as, as you saw in, in, on one of the slides uh, in the previous present, my previous presentation, um, the cyclopentadienyl cation has a triplet ground state. Uh, and we can uh, look on these compounds, compounds here, uh, and uh, just uh, take the the ratio between these uh, these excitation energies, and we can see that for this one, we are uh, approaching a value of two, uh, which indicates that we are then close to what is required for a uh, for a single attrition uh, chromophore, uh, and. Um, we, uh, what we did uh, was now to 
investigate a large series of differently substituted pentafulvenes. Uh, and we could see that um, the, um, this uh, assumption that we have uh, a rather uh, kind of constant energy gap between the, um, the two, uh, the S1 and the T1 state, uh, that assumption holds uh, to some, some degree. Uh, there is, of course, a large um, kind of spread in the values here. Um, but uh, and we can see uh, both uh, the S1 and the T1 state um, goes down in energy when we increase the um, ground state uh, anti-aromaticity here. So in, in, uh, in analogy to the, uh, to the conclusion based on comparing benzene and uh, cyclobutadiene. Uh, and uh, interestingly, also the T2 state, uh, as you see here, uh, does not really vary with the, uh, with the uh, extent of uh, uh, ground state aromaticity. So um, at this uh, position here, uh, we will get gradually more uh, full veins, which have uh, the T2 state uh, above the uh, S1 state. So um, yeah, there, there's... Uh, with this uh, tool or very uh, qualitative tool, we should be able to identify uh, new single fission chromophores. Uh, and uh, presently we are um, investigating uh, experimentally a series of um, variously substituted pentafulvenes. Uh, but um, uh, the dilemma with the simple ones is the fact that they um, they also can rotate uh, around the uh, exocyclic double bond, uh, and in that way, non-radiatively decay to the ground state. Um, it seems like um, that if we uh, bends annihilate further, uh, we'll get um, um, compounds that uh, potentially are suitable for for signal uh, photovoltaics. But this is uh, what we presently ongoing. Um, my uh, second part here uh, is that I will be talking on photoreactivity and here uh, building uh, on, on a study we published some years ago on um, the photochemistry of cyclopropyl uh, substituted anulenes. Uh, we considered that the cyclopropyl group could be used as an indicator for excited state aromaticity because if the cyclopropyl group sits um, uh, on an, or the cyclopropyl group <clears throat> uh, ring opens uh, when it sits next to a, uh, next to a radical uh, center and also to a, to a bi-radical. Uh, but if it would sit uh, next to a uh, uh, cyclic uh, or to an aromatic uh, unit, triplet state aromatic, it should remain uh, intact. And this is uh, what one can uh, observe. Um, well, cyclopropyl benzene uh, polymerizes uh, quite rapidly within an uh, hour or something like that, um, while uh, cyclopropyl uh, cyclooctatetrane uh, under both uh, direct and sensitized irradiation, uh, it only uh, remains as, uh, as, as uh, unreacted. And qualitatively, one can understand this from the fact that uh, benzene, cyclopropyl benzene, of course, will um, alleviate its anti-aromaticity, uh, getting back to something which is partially hyckel aromatic here, uh, while um, cyclopropyl COT, which is aromatic in this, um, when the cyclopropyl group is ring closed, uh, it will lose this uh, triplet state aromaticity when the cyclopropyl group is uh, ring opened. Uh, and this should be an uh, uphill reaction. And looking on the triplet state, this is uh, actually what is seen. Uh, very low uh, activation energy for the cyclopropyl ring opening in the triplet state. Uh, and it was also, it was a little bit higher in the, I think it was 10 kcal per mole in the, in the S1 state here, uh, according to COSPT2. Uh, and one can look on uh, aromaticity indices, uh, here the geometric uh, index uh, HOMA, uh, where um, the negative HOMA value indicates anti-aromaticity, which we have in um, the ring-closed uh, cyclopropyl benzene, 
Um, but as soon as the cyclopropyl group uh, opens, uh, we get back uh, a highly positive value uh, on the benzene ring, indicating that we have regained uh, Hückel uh, aromaticity. And that this is then more like a, a, a benzyl radical. Uh, for the uh, cyclopropyl COT, we have the opposite uh, relationship. Uh, now the ring closed uh, form has a, a high a positive uh, HOMA value indicating aromaticity. And this aromaticity is lost when we uh, open the cyclopropyl group. But is this just due to the spin density at the, the group, uh, at the carbon to which the cyclopropyl group is attached? Uh, or is it really, does it depend on the uh, extent of excited state aromaticity, anti-aromaticity? Um, for this, uh, we looked on the cyclopropyl ring opening uh, for a set of uh, non-aromatic uh, compounds um, and the triplet state activation barriers. Uh, and one could see then uh, um, rather um, kind of that the activation energy for these uh, varied uh, with the spin density at the carbon to which the cyclopropyl group was attached. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, but then uh, what is the, how does it differ when we have potentially excited state aromatic and anti-aromatic uh, anulines? We looked on this uh, for these um, uh, species, um, cycle, uh, rings with 4N uh, pi electron heterocycles or cycles and rings with 4N plus two uh, cycles. Uh, and uh, then plotting the activation energies uh, calculated for these um, compounds, triplet state activation energies, we could see that the activation energies for the 4N species were higher than uh, what would expected if they had been uh, non-aromatic. Uh, and the um, species with 4N plus two pi electron cycles, which would be excited state anti-aromatic or R, um, they had lower activation barriers than had there been uh, non-aromatic. So this clearly seems to be an effect uh, on the uh, uh, by uh, arom excited state aromaticity, anti-aromaticity on the height of the uh, activation barrier. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this fact that we have higher activation barriers for the uh, or photochemical activation barriers for the 4N pi electron cycles is also in agreement with uh, Peter Wang's uh, um, uh, observations um, in the early 90s, uh, because when looking on uh, dibenzooxepin, he found that it had a much higher photostability than uh, this compound, the, um, the hydro uh, benz, uh, benzooxepin. Uh, and this compound rearranged to some uh, spiral uh, adducts. So um, going over then into the, um, to the excited state proton transfer, uh, this is work that we've done uh, together with um, uh, Professor Judy Vu at uh, Houston and um, Lucas Caras, uh, now a postdoc in Judy's group. Uh, and Lucas is very, uh, a, a, a great cartoonist uh, also. So we get very interesting, nice uh, uh, talk uh, images. Um, the starting with um, salicylic acid. Uh, here we of course have, we all know that uh, one can observe a very large uh, Stokes shift. Um, this, uh, which indicates that one has a large uh, structural um, rearrangement uh, in the uh, excited state. Uh, and we considered uh, this to be uh, due to an, a kind of an, uh, a, a, a desire for the, for the benzene ring to uh, relieve its uh, excited state anti-aromaticity. And uh, looking, yeah, then, so uh, at the two um, tautomers, the enol form uh, and the keto form, um, the enol form uh, in the ground state uh, is of course aromatic uh, with the benzene ring. Uh, and this one is um, not, <clears throat> or only very weakly, and it's not favorable. But in the excited state, 
this will be bad uh, and what it can do then by alleviating, uh, pushing uh, the proton over to the other side, uh, we uh, alleviate, relieve the anti-aromaticity. And this <clears throat> is also in agreement with the calculated mix values. Um, the ground state, we have a, a negative mix value corresponding to aromaticity, but we're going to the <clears throat> S1 state we have strongly positive corresponding to an anti-aromatic situation. Um, but when the uh, proton is shuffled um, over to the, um, to the uh, acetyl group, <clears throat> we have uh, a, a significant reduction in the anti-aromaticity. It's still uh, anti-aromatic, but, but much less. Um, one can uh, look on uh, other um, molecules um, such as this, um, uh, benzooxazoles, and found here that we have, yeah, uh, again, uh, in the ground state, we have uh, negative uh, Nix values for this uh, tautomer, <clears throat> but on, upon excitation, it becomes um, more strongly positive, or becomes positive indicating anti-aromaticity. Uh, but then when the, uh, upon excited state uh, proton transfer, we get uh, a relief of that anti-aromaticity. And um, in the T1 state, even some, I would say some aromaticity. Uh, and this uh, also kind of <clears throat> goes along uh, the energy changes uh, for, for this process. Uh, the tautomerization, um, uh, is, um, uh, it's an uh, endothermic uh, reaction in the ground state, uh, but then an exothermic uh, in both the S1 uh, and the T1 state, um, indicating that we have a loss of uh, or reduction of excited state anti-aromaticity. Finally, um, we also have uh, been investigated uh, proton coupled uh, electron transfer reactions. Uh, I was participating on, on, on the one looking on uh, the DNA base, base pairs, um, uh, PCD reactions. <clears throat> I will not be able to talk uh, on that, but um, kind of um, would like to direct you to uh, either of these two papers here. Uh, and yeah, with that, I would like to, 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 to conclude and say that uh, again, um, time is ready to make use of Baird's rule, um, but when using that, uh, using the rules um, and the concept of excited state aromaticity, we must uh, also be aware of the limitations, the complications and the pitfalls. So there I would like to thank you. Um, now uh, Uppsala looks a little bit like this. Uh, I prefer much more when it looks like this on this cartoon. Uh, Uppsala is a very nice student town, so. Yeah, and, and a good summer town. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Henry, for a very nice talk. And now uh, the talk is open for questions. So I don't see any hands raised, but maybe I can start. So relating to a question that Fabio asked uh, in the previous uh, tutorial section, when I look at this uh, keto enol tautomerism, would you be able to do like excited, like transient absorption spectroscopy and that would give you changes in the absorption spectrum and these species can then be uh, studied experimentally? Mm, um, yeah, um, that should be, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, suggestion to uh, um, I mean, I'm not in the field, so I, I don't know. I've been just learning from the talk that I've been hearing here. So uh, it would I, be nice if other people. Yeah, yes, continue. yes. I, 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 I'm, I'm not an um, uh, experimental physical chemist, so I would not. Um, but um, I think it, it, it would um, be in very interesting, uh, try to uh, kind of match with, with the computations and the, kind of, yes, with, with the vibrational, uh, time-resolved yeah. vibrational uh, spectroscopy. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, I don't see any questions, but I just wanted to then, you know, ask you another quick question. This negative nucleus independent chemical shift, uh, what does it actually, so this is a calculation as far as I understand, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is basically what, what can this, we relate this to in terms, like a phys, in terms of a physical uh, term? The, the physical justification of I mean, in terms of, you know, when I think about chemical shift, I'm thinking in PPM, I'm thinking of NMR, but uh, when, so you've given this in, the value is in PPM. So <clears throat> I'm just trying to understand, uh, you know, what, uh, yeah, it's, you um, can just explain this a bit more. <clears throat> uh, it's the one, one place as a so-called BQ atom or, or a ghost atom, um, at an, um, in, in empty space uh, outside and uh, calculates the chemical shielding uh, at that um, tensor. And, and uh, it um, would not really correspond to anything which is experimentally measurable. Um, <coughs> um, so while well, one can, there were, um, Schleier, I think, uh, did some correlations to or investigating connection to lithium uh, NMR spectroscopy, lithium six, lithium seven, um, mm -hmm. which which also could be used as a probe because it was. Um, but um, I, I see. It, so basically, you're placing a ghost atom, and you're trying to see what kind of electric field that is seen on the aromatic ring, right? Yeah. Yes. Or, the, okay, uh, well, the the induced mm -hmm. uh, recording, then the induced um, mm -hmm. ring current, um, so that it becomes, um, yeah, the, the 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 chemical shielding tensor in that yes, point, I, but it's mm -hmm. um, completely. Uh, atom, there, there's no shielding to it because mm. there's, or well, there there is a shielding, but it's not a chemical. Um, mm. Well, yeah, it's a chemical shielding also, but it's it's not. Yeah, it's further. Mm -hmm. It's it's difficult to to explain what it's. Okay. No, I I understand that now. But so then, mostly the aromatic systems are showing a negative. A value and the anti aromatic systems are showing a positive value. So that is how you're distinguishing between the two, right? Yes, but uh, okay. I would <clears throat> say that uh, it has, there are some caveats, some, some pitfalls. Um, so one should, when running uh, NICs, one should always also calculate um, the, the, uh, um, the current density to try to mm -hmm. see what type of ring current do I have? It, it could be um, that uh, one has a diatropic ring current localized at certain atoms, uh, and they can then give rise to uh, negative Nix values. But um, in order to satisfy as um, classify as aromatic, uh, you must have a ring current that goes through the complete, um, through the complete cycle. Uh, Okay, Fabio, uh, do you have a question? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, uh, I think you mm, uh, commented about the Nix. Uh, and uh, well, actually, I think the advantage of a Nix is uh, that um, it is a single number, right? So with one number, uh, it's possible to characterize aromaticity, but on the other hand, uh, uh, it doesn't have an experimental counterpart. So as Eric said, uh, a, a ring current is actually something that is more realistic, but it's more difficult to calculate. And I would like to ask to Eric uh, about the method of calculation of the ring currents, because uh, there are several different methods. Uh, for example, uh, besides the uh, ACID, uh, also there are methods for example, used by, uh, for example, in the group of uh, Dage Sundon, you may know that uh, he's also working uh, on this um, type of um, research. Yeah. So, um, which which method is uh, the most less realistic, and uh, uh, why do you use specifically the uh, ACID method? Um, yeah, we 
we now use uh, acid because it's simple, but it's not uh, it's not really the rink or the uh, current density. It's uh, to to calculate it more directly would be to calculate it or um, use uh, GIMIC or something the um, uh, Guillermo Monaco, for example, or um, have have. Um, but we are using here uh, acid uh, more because of uh, facility there. But yes, there are um, there are several different um, packages or, or so softwares. My, my, my word is not a word. I, 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 I hear you very uh, weakly. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure I should uh, maybe increase the the sound uh, uh, just a moment please yeah uh, uh, just a moment i will uh... um perhaps i mean in the interest of time fabio you can just uh, maybe type your question in the chat and we can go to the break in the meantime and henrik can answer your question as you know a chat because we're already uh, going a little bit ahead of uh, okay, no problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we, you can just keep on chatting with Hendrik, but in the meantime, let's thank Hendrik by using the reactions button. Thanks a lot for a very nice talk, Hendrik.